Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning, you guys. Good freaking morning and happy, I believe, Monday morning. Yes, Monday morning. It's Monday. We are like holy, a week from Christmas. We are exactly one week. Wow, I just mentally did the math. Don't look at my calendar. I need to move it. We are mentally, well, <laughs> We are not quite mentally, but we are actually one week from Christmas. Are you ready? As Taylor would say, as the queen would say, are you ready for it? Because it's coming. It's coming. I think I purchased the last of my Christmas gifts. Well, tomorrow morning, I'll be getting the last of my gift cards, but I purchased the last of my physical Christmas gifts today. I just, I meant to purchase the gift cards today, but I wanted to get Amazon gift cards and Walmart didn't have Amazon gift cards. I have to go to a CVS. So to CVS I go. And um, yeah, going to CVS and getting Amazon gift cards tomorrow morning. But I digress. How is everybody doing? And are you ready for the holiday? We are doing all of our family gifts and Santa gifts on Christmas Eve this year. So anything from my husband or I or Santa to my daughter is getting opened after dinner on Christmas Eve. And we're doing a finger foods and um, seafood dinner. That is my daughter's choice. She loves to do seafood on Christmas Eve. Um, so we're doing crab legs and shrimp cocktail and then we're having stuffed mushrooms, possibly like a little meat and cheese tray. It's going to be so much fun. And so that is what we are doing on Christmas Eve. Oh, and my olive dip. It is so, so simple. It's literally just mayonnaise, sour cream, a little bit of cream cheese, and um, green salad olives with the pimento that are pre-sliced. And then I serve it on club crackers. They love it. So, yeah, it is going to be super low key. And then Christmas day, we are going down to my mom's who only lives 90 minutes away now. It's so nice. I think I told you guys early in 2023, my mother moved from Florida to 90 minutes from my front door. And it has been the most wonderful thing in the world. I'm wearing my Rick and Morty shirt, so don't judge. Um, it has been an insane couple of days. I did a four hour podcast last night for podcast assembled. I'm going to try and get it uploaded over here. But by the time this comes out, you will be able to find it for sure at the super homies, the superhero homies or evolved review. I will link both of their channels in the um, comment section because you'll be able to find it there if I can't figure out how to get this long video uploaded here. And it is um, a 2023 wrapped, basically. The best and worst, the highs and lows of movies, TV, video games, and books. And it was so much fun. Four hours flew by like it always does whenever I'm with that crew. It was myself, the Crochet Fairy, who you saw me do my You Mean the Nightmare Painter live review with. It was... um. Caleb from Evolved Review, and it was Ace from the Superhero Homies, and then of course myself, and we had the absolute best time, always do with that crew. We were missing Oz from the Tavern Notice Board, but hopefully he will be back next time. Had an absolute blast, though. It was so much freaking fun. Um... But today, I'm here to talk about my most recent read. And it was a good one. It was a good one. I just finished. It's been probably all over your Facebook, possibly, or maybe even your TikTok. It was like the book of the month club's book of the month for, um, I believe it was November. 
and that is Butcher in the Black, The Butcher in the Black Bird by Bryn Weaver. I finished it. I did do it on Audible because it was highly recommended to me to be done on Audible. And the reason for that is that it is dual voiced. Um, let me pause here because I want to get the name of the people who voiced it because they were incredible. Okay, I wanted to make sure that I had the Audible readers names narrators right because they were incredible so it is voiced by lucy rivers and joe arden and joe arden has a very strong irish accent he does rowan and then lucy rivers does blackbird uh the girl um what is her name in this darn book sloan sloan and rowan are the names of the two characters in this book and so Lucy Rivers reads Sloan parts and um, Joe Arden reads Rowan parts. So it was recommended to me on the Audible app for that particular reason because they were like, sorry, I'm just making sure I've got this loaded. Okay. Um, because they were like, oh, it's, it's really good on Audible. And normally I would only do something on Audible if it was like in a series that I had already started on Audible, I digress. I'm going to buy the physical book because it was quickly one of my favorites of the year. What is The Butcher and the Blackbird about? It is about two serial killers. Killers. So serial killer killers. They essentially, both of them, end up meeting because they are hunting the same serial killer. And, um, they come up with a game, a yearly game that they're going to play where they're like, oh, every year my brother, Rowan's brother, is going to pick a random serial killer. We have to figure out who it is and then see who can get him first, right? And so for a couple of years, they do this and they flirt and it's very slow burn as far as getting to the actual romance part that's a lot of missed connection with them um it does have a minute and 30 seconds of trigger warnings at the beginning of the book so it has like cannibalism accidental cannibalism not so accidental cannibalism um murder torture some dom sub stuff um there's a lot of trigger warnings with it. I will say I did fast forward occasionally on some of the like eye gouging parts. But as far as just a dark romance, I thought it was so, so, so good. I thought it was just phenomenal. Um, if you are at all squeamish, I would definitely maybe do the book version first before the audible, even though the audible read the narrators are so good. But with the book, you can kind of Kay and I, the crochet fairy, and I were talking about this last night. Like, unattach yourself from it when it's a book. If there's a lot of trigger warnings, that maybe make you uncomfortable. Um, but then you can, like, skip paragraphs if you know they're, like, torture or serial killer murdering. Um, and then, but honestly, I'm about as squeamish as they come. You can ask my husband. And I still did the audible, and I cringed a bit in certain parts. But it was definitely worth it to do the audible for the two narrators. They did such a freaking phenomenal job. This was a five star plus read for me this year. And I just could not, could not get enough of it. I thought it was so, so good. And I highly recommend it. It is cute. It is funny. It is dark. It is everything that you want out of your dark romance. Um... I don't read a whole lot of dark romance. I prefer romance as you guys know, but I've read some dark romance and not loved it. I've been like, this is just weird. This did not at all give me those vibes. And it was about as dark a subject matter as you can have. So Bryn Weaver props to you because you took an extremely dark subject matter, but you made it enjoyable to even somebody who doesn't normally read dark romance, who doesn't like getting the heebie-jeebies. And you still made it accessible to all people. Um, highly, highly recommend this one. You've probably seen it, like I said, on your Facebook 
on your TikTok, it's worth the investment. It is 100% worth the investment in this one. I finished it in like a day. I could not put it down. Was phenomenal. But yeah, that is my review for this week. We are one week from Christmas. Holy crap. I am not doing a what I bought my teenager video this year for a few reasons. One, she sometimes watches my vlogs. I'm not, I'm on to you, Sophia. I'm not, I'm not putting all your presents on the, the YouTube for you to see. Second of all, um, as she gets older, um, there's less of them because each one is way more expensive. And, um, some of them are just not things that I can show like a trip to New York city, Washington, DC, Philadelphia, and Boston. I can't show that to you guys physically. And, um, because of that, I'm just not showing this year. I might show, I might do a mini vlog, mini vlog post Christmas showing like a, you know, vlog of her opening some of the things or whatever. But honestly, I'm probably just going to do a book haul on what I get for Christmas and keep it trucking just because this is not a family channel. This is not a family vlog channel. My daughter, I like to keep completely out of the show for a variety of reasons. One, she's becoming a young woman, and um, it's going to take one side of the net comment. One. And I will not be on YouTube anymore. Because I do not fuck around when it comes to that kid. So, it's just best if I don't show her. And um, because of that, you guys aren't, like, invested. You don't care what she got for Christmas. So, like I said, I might do a short, actually. YouTube really wants me to do more shorts, so I might do a quick little short of all of the things that I wrapped and she opened up under the tree on Christmas Eve. So, I love you guys so much. I hope you're ready for Christmas. If you're not, ask for help. Do not be scared to ask for help. This is the season where us moms and dads or aunts and uncles who may be our caretakers put a lot on our shoulders. I am the last person to ask for help from anybody, but if you need it, do it. And I'm going to try to take my own advice. I love you guys. Love you guys. Merry Christmas season. I will see you with a video on Wednesday, Saturday, and then a beautiful, hopefully, video on Christmas morning. And here's to 2023 because it's almost done. Bye, guys.